CRBSI is one of the most deadliest infections. A patient gets an infection in the bloodstream, they could die. That's the bottom line. We don't ever want that to happen. We're here to protect our patients. That's what we do. Naturally, an infection for a patient is never a good thing. And um, the way we look at it is it should be a zero event. It should never happen. At the end of the day, it's, it's the patient. That's the number one concern. The patient comes first. And this was another process to put in place to make sure that we got them you know, much better and back on the road to recovery. My name is Ava Dobin. I'm the Regional Manager of Epidemiology and Safety and I work at Broward Health Coral Springs Medical Center. I've been in infection control for 30 years. Because my job entails following all patient infections here and I knew I was having a problem with the catheter-related bloodstream infections, it led me on a mission to find a way to reduce them. We were already in compliance with all the recommendations put out there by the CDC and the IHI, and we really had to look beyond that to find what I could do as my mission here to reduce those catheter-related bloodstream infections. We have implemented a number of things that um, got us to a certain level of success, but at that point um, we were finding that we had so to speak, hit the wall and we weren't moving any further. Um, we had implemented um, protective um, patches over the, the site where the catheter was, and we had introduced the IHI bundle, which is a checklist for practitioners to follow when they insert the catheters. Um, so we did have some measures in place, but we still found that we were ending up with an average of three per month and not being able to move quite any further than that. So I'm saying, all right, we have strict sterile technique. I've been in the OR. I've watched surgeons put in the lines. I've been in the pick room. I've watched the nurses put in the line. Their technique is meticulous. So why are the patients still acquiring an infection? So I went to the floor to speak with the people that are doing the actual work, the frontline people. And I asked them to show me, how do you access these lines? How do you take care of them? How do you change them and I noticed there was a lack of continuity with accessing the lines. Not everybody does everything exactly the same all the time. That's where I started focusing my attention on. Nurses are extremely busy people and they have a lot of processes um, in the course of their day, things that are very exacting in how they have to be done and there are numerous of these processes um, involved in their work. And any time you add layers of complexity um, or duplication, there, there's the potential for, and variability by the way, um, for there to be um, lack of compliance. We knew that this was something that was important to take care of and that we had to put some processes in place. And having our own epidemiologist or infection control specialist, we were able to move forward with that. So I started researching what was out there in the literature came upon hearing about these disinfection caps and said, I want to see what this is all about. Some other hospitals were using it with success, so I needed to see for myself. I approached my nursing leadership. My epidemiologist, Ava, um, had come to me about a success story that she had heard at one of our sister hospitals um, related to reduction in central line um, infections. Um, after she presented me with the case, um, it sounded like something that we should try here. Educated the staff, trialed it for three months, and went right down to zero. Ava, in the true professional that she is, uh, as an epidemiologist, identified a serious issue that was going on here. And looking at whether it was at other hospitals or just a lot of the stuff that she reads through the CDC and, and other publications that she has, she realized that there was some sort of uh, an, an opportunity here that we had to take. Uh, so she had brought this forward 
to our chief nursing officer, who also is our chief operating officer, Kim, and was able to talk to her and saying, you know, we need to look at another product to take a look at, you know, here's the cost of it, but here is exactly what we could possibly have in potential savings as well, but more importantly, getting the infection rate down. We're very fortunate here to have a CEO who um, understands patient care and is supportive um, on a regular basis about our initiatives. And I think we had a good business case when we sat down with our CFO, who um, obviously critically looks at any type of a proposal like this, but felt that this was something that you really couldn't argue about. Um, the, the evidence was there, and it was something that we should pursue. And it really was a no-brainer. It's so easy to use. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to do for our patients, and I guess that's always going to be my passion, is to protect the patients that come in here. And seven months later, I'm still at zero. It's, it's always easy to put a process together on paper, but then when you try to ask people to actually carry it out, depending on how many steps are involved and how long it takes, can impact your compliance. What you're looking for is standardization and hardwiring processes into someone's workflow so that it becomes more of a natural um, process for them. It doesn't feel like it's out of the ordinary and something extra and something that they have to cut a corner around because it's just part of the workflow. There are domino effects. If something happens in one area of the hospital, it could ricochet and affect somewhere else across the line. So people have to be very conscientious of what they're doing at all times, but more importantly that it takes a team to do this. It's not individuals. We want to make sure that people realize that from the leadership perspective, that they have leadership as well. They're, again, they're out there on the floors. And again, we try to empower them on a daily basis to make sure that they get the job done right and that we're there to support them. I think one of the main things that are so important in this day and age is to really look at whatever's being done from the standpoint of the nurse who's doing the actual bedside labor. And if we can make her job easier so she could spend more time doing other aspects of patient care, it's a win-win situation for everyone around.